Hello YouTube, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a storage pool. And this is a pretty cool new technology that I like to show you guys. They've included it with Windows 8 uh, storage spaces, and now they have uh, the same features up in Windows Server 2012. Essentially what you're going to do is first make sure that your disks, sometimes I like to make them offline if they can't get detected by the storage pool, but first of all you want to make them unallocated, not partitioned. You're going to go up into your server manager, and when you open your server manager, it'll look like this. This is the dashboard. You're going to click on File and Storage Services. You're going to, you're from here, you're going to click on Storage Pools. And you're going to click on Tasks, New Storage Pool. You're going to read this if you're interested. You're going to click Next. Give it a meaningful name. We're going to call this Storage Pool 1. We're going to click Next. Now I have a 500 gig drive and I have about a 250 gig drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to click each one of these. And you can also add one as a hot spare if you want, but we're not going to. We're going to just keep it as this. We're going to click Next. That all looks good. We're going to click Create. It does its thing. Now we've created a larger disk out of the two. We have a 700 gig drive here now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a virtual disk now because you cannot see the storage pool inside of here. It's it's not the same thing. <clears throat> okay? And you can't see it here anymore either. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Virtual Disk, and we're going to go Task. Let's refresh this. new virtual disk. You can also click new virtual disk here. And if it doesn't let you and it's grayed out, you just need to hit refresh. Okay? So, new virtual disk, we're going to click next. We're going to click from that storage pool. And what we're going to we're going to give it a name of let's call it simply enough, we'll call it um, VDI data. We'll pretend that this would be for maybe um, this would be like if you wanted to maybe you know put like maybe say your user data or maybe you're gonna put your um, maybe you're gonna put your user data for home folders or something like that there. So you can do different things. You can do a simple which means uh, it's striped across the physical disks which will make it quicker or you can do a mirror for reliability, or you can do parity. <coughs> parity will provide um, basically a, a mix of a mirror <coughs> and striping. Okay? And I don't think we can click a mirror. See? It doesn't have enough physical disk. You need at least three. And I did that to show you. If you want to create a mirror or a RAID 1, you need to have at least two disks. If you want to create a RAID 5 array or parity, you need at least three. So we're going to click a mirror because we do have two. And so there's a difference between thin and fixed. It's kind of like the uh, difference between fixed and dynamically allocated. So we can click thin if we want, or we can click fixed. We're probably going to go with fixed. So we're going to give it a size now. We'll call this 250 gigs. And you can also allocate it in megabytes or terabytes. Or you can just click maximum size. And it would take it all. Click create. It's going to create a VDI. Okay. You see how it aired out here? I did that to show you something. The other disk we have is less than 250 gigs. This is not going to work for a mirror, is it? Of course not. So we're going to click close. What we're going to do is we're going to cancel this wizard. We're going to delete this. It will work, but it's not going to give you full full raid. Next, next. Hard drive's clicking away. Pick a mirror again. Fixed. We're going to pick 150 gigabytes. Great. This time it shouldn't chuck an error. So we click next. 
we choose it, and that hard drive I'm actually using, I can hear it clicking away, but it is a tinier Scorpio Western Digital Black, so it's had its day too. We'll refresh, we didn't need to, but I'm clicking that anyway. Click next. I'll specify the size of the volume, 150 gigs works for me. Drive letter D. That works. Volume folder. Now we can pick NTFS or REFS. REFS is their new file system. And it has many stipulations. First of all, REFS cannot um, support operating systems that are lower than Windows 8 or Server 2012. But it has a lot, um, it can support a lot bigger volume sizes than NTFS can. And it's w Windows new file system that they're, they're toting. But uh, we're just going to choose NTFS for now. We'll call this NTFS VDI Mirror. Let's see if that file name's good enough. Click Create. It's formatting the volume. It's adding an access pass and it's updating the cache. All those operations are complete now. We're going to click close. And as you can see, we'll go to here and we have something called NTS VDI mirror. We go in here, we can click new folder and click user. We can click type home folders. Boom. We can go in, we can assign permissions, do everything that we want to do, share the folder out share it with everyone we're not we wouldn't do that with our home folders but we could okay click share done and that pretty much sums it up if you guys have any questions or comments please let me know um, and if you guys want to see particular things about windows server that i did not cover let me know and i'll make another video for you guys i hope you guys have a great day and until next time have a great day hello youtube one other thing i wanted to tell you guys is because we briefly covered it was there's some big things I wanted to cover about REFS. Okay, and one of them was that there's no EFS supported or encrypted file system. It's not supported with the new REFS file system. No file compression and no disk quotas. And it does not support Windows 7 or lower. And another thing I wanted to tell you guys, just to recap as well, is that in order to make your storage pool, you need to make sure that your disks are unallocated. And as I said, I prefer to make them inactive, but you don't need to. But some cases I found you did. Um, some other things to point out is that we talked about making VHDs, but we didn't talk much about VHDX. So VHDs can be up to 2,048 gigabytes, while VDHX support up to 64 terabyte files. And uh, VHDX is for server 2012 only. Some other things about um, about storage pools is they have something called evict evict disk. And that basically, because everything else that you'll see in here is pretty straightforward if you're used to Windows Server, but a VIC disk basically means that it's going to prepare a disk for leaving a storage pool, okay? Those are some things I didn't cover. And some other things that I just wanted to reinforce is that a simple volume stripes data. There's no fault tolerance and is a minimal of one disk. A mirror requires two disks, um, and five disks can support two failures if you do, if you do it like that. So... Parity can support up to, uh, has needs to have at least three disks, and I believe it can support like RAID five up to thirty two disks, and it's a combination of striping and mirroring. Okay, and so we talked about thin and fixed. Basically, thin means it's dynamic, fixed means it's fixed size. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. And one of the things I should tell you though is just a recap: the difference between a partition and a volume is a partition is a basic disk, a volume is a dynamic disk. Okay, that pretty much sums it up. I hope you guys liked watching. Uh, please subscribe for more. 